Well, with the theme of the pragmatics of anomalies, I decided to prepare a uh, presentation about making associative remote viewing work practically. Just as a quick overview of what ARV is, um, typically two alternate targets will be prepared or chosen from a larger pool. Each of them is associated with two possible outcomes for an, an event of some kind. Then a remote viewer generates a transcript. An analyst compares the transcript with the two possible targets and decides which is a closer match. Usually there's an option to say that, well, neither of them matches this at all. Um, when the event is known, again, usually the associated target will be shown to the viewer as, as ground truth. There are some, some viewers who think this kind of feedback is very important for refining and maintaining your skills. There are others who say it doesn't matter. But in any case, if the viewing is accurate, it's a prediction of the event outcome. Um, now, many long-term ARV projects seem to stabilize at about 55 to 60 percent accuracy. Uh, some of them don't. Uh, some of them continue to suffer decline effects and end up below 50 percent. Uh, some of them may uh, stabilize at higher values. Uh, this, this is a uh, rather difficult project, uh, difficult issue to try to do research on because there are a lot of people who brag about their a ARV potential. There are relatively few who publish about it reliably. Um, the, uh, and most people feel that this 55 to 60 percent long-term accuracy level is not adequate for a working practical application. The typical cause of error is what's called displacement. Um, I've, I've experienced this as an analyst. I've heard stories about it from many researchers. It is really amazingly frustrating when the remote viewer gives you a beautifully detailed, spot-on description of the target that he is never going to be shown. Um, and there, th there is a considerable amount of theoretical puzzlement as to how and why this happens. And a lot of people seem to believe that we need to overcome the displacement problem in order to get practical use out of ARV. Now, um, Chapter 3 of Courtney Brown's Remote Viewing describes in detail a multi-viewer experiment in which target choices were ultimately established by a draw in the Georgia Cash 4 lottery. It was not designed as an ARV attempt, but its data could have been used for ARV because all the analyses were completed before the lottery draw established which targets were quote-unquote right. Now, Courtney himself says that in, in, right in the book that the project couldn't have turned a profit if it had been set up as ARV because of various problems in the prediction, which we're about to take a look at, but he's actually wrong in saying that it couldn't have been used. So to uh, describe the experiment, rather than ask everybody to quickly read the chapter of the book in the next two minutes, um, the uh, cash for lottery is the typical four random digits the four-digit draw established 16 binary target selections uh, via an encoding in which each decimal digit determined a four-bit sequence. Now, there are 16 possible sequences, there are only 10 digits, so that means that six of the 16 possible co combinations did not correspond to any digit at all. There were five viewers involved, each of them generated 16 viewings, one for each, uh, one, one, one for each target pair for a total of 80 trials. Um, viewer associations were split on each target pair. That is, supposing that you have targets A and B for a particular bit, three viewers would be assigned to associate target A with the zero outcome, and the other two would be assigned to associate target A with the one outcome. That means that if everybody gets, gets it right, generates a correct prediction, then it would you'd see three of the viewers matching A and two of them matching B. Of the overall statistics, um, again, this, this is published material right there in Courtney's book if you want to check up on it. 40 of the 80 were hits in which the viewer's transcript matched the target associated with the actual outcome. 
20 were displaced. In that chapter, he calls them switched, although he talks about the displacement pro problem in other chapters. <laughs> Ask him. Um, and 20 trials were undecidable. The analyst couldn't establish a preference for either picture. I was a little bit boggled when I realized that this had split in an exactly 50%, 25%, 25% pattern, but I mean, round numbers come up now and then in research. Uh, so 75% of the trials produced a target choice of some kind, and 67% were correct. That, that's pretty good. That's better than that background average I was referring to. Of course, these were trained, experienced viewers using a protocol that is supposed to be very good. Um, now, what I uh, saw when looking at this is that you could apply a five trial majority vote technique. Um, theoretically, with the stats on individual trials coming out to 50% hit, 25% miss, 25% no decision, if you do a majority vote of five, the corresponding stats are about two-thirds hits, a little over 17% misses, a little over 15% no decisions for the, the collection of all predictions on a particular bit. That means that with 16 bits that we're looking at, we expect a little under three errors and somewhere between two and three tied votes with no decision. And the outcome turns out to be exactly what we would expect from the individual trial statistics. Uh, when you do a five-way majority vote, whoop, sorry, I was pressing the uh, advance instead of the laser pointer, there are three errors, which I've marked in red, which I hope is showing up on there, and there are two undecidable cases where, because there was either one or three can't make a decision on the individual trial, the ones that could be decided were evenly split. Uh, and that, now if you look at the last row there, from the encoding scheme, it's gibberish. Two of these codes don't correspond to a number, and the other two have an unknown bit in them, so we can't tell what number they are, if any. Now, if we're thinking about trying to make an ARV application out of data like this, uh, we'd better anticipate that there will be errors. Uh, five, five way majority vote is just not enough to eliminate uh, potential wrong decisions. Uh, now to evaluate how this would work as ARV, uh, to create a design, we need to forget about the fact that we actually know the target and think about what can we deduce from the actual experimental data that would have been in hand before the target was established. Now, even without knowing the target, we know that two bits are undetermined because we've got a split vote. It's right there in the data. We also know there have to be at least two errors because two of the digit codes don't correspond to valid numbers. There could be more than two errors, and in any case, we don't know which bits of our 16-bit sequence are in error. The solution is to systematically look at all of the possible four-digit draws that could have generated what was actually observed, starting with the fewest possible errors and working our way up to larger numbers of errors. The two undetermined bits give us four starting patterns for each of the possible assignment of values to those two bits that each could be either zero or one. We then add two errors. There's no point in adding less than two because we know in advance that would be wrong. Three errors and so forth in each possible position in the sequence of 16 and see how many of those modified 16-bit sets give us valid four-digit sequences. Um, obviously, the more errors we assume are present, than the more possible four-digit sequences we find. With, if we assume the two errors that we know have to be there, then there are 12 possible four-digit sequences. That grows fairly rapidly. With three errors, there are, could be 130 sequences that led to this target pattern. With four, there could be 626 and so forth. Uh, now, what if somebody goes out and buys 